The first annual Blue and Gold Game Draft, on this podcast at least, is coming right up. You are Locked On Irish, your daily podcast on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome into Locked On Irish, your daily Notre Dame podcast. Today is Wednesday, April 17th, and thank you for getting your day started right here by making this your first listen of the day. I'm Tyler Wojcik, and I'm the host. I'm a Notre Dame alum and producer at Fox Sports, and you can watch this show on YouTube, or you can listen wherever you get your podcasts. If you are watching along on YouTube, please give that video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Or if you're on the go and you're listening to the podcast, please take a second, rate the show five stars, leave a review, and subscribe there as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Okay, I am so excited about today's episode. In just a moment here, Luke Smith is going to jump on, and we are going to draft our blue and gold game teams for the spring game. But instead of the blue and gold teams, it's more like the Luke and Woj teams. You get my point. Notre Dame will hold their actual draft for the spring game tomorrow on Thursday. But we thought it'd be fun to get ahead of it and do it ourselves and then compare it to what the coaches actually picked later on. Now, the rules are a little bit different for ours because we're only going to pick the starting lineup as opposed to the entire roster. But this is going to be a lot of fun, and I think it's going to tell us a lot about how much we value specific guys in the roster now that spring practice is nearing its end and what positions have a lot of depth and what positions are getting a little bit thin. So let's do it. All right, Luke Smith is back with me here to do something brand new on this podcast. We're each going to draft our own team using the players on Notre Dame's spring roster to create our version of the blue and gold game. We have been slaving away, prepping for this for weeks now. Luke, are you ready for this draft? Uh, I'm as ready as I'll ever be. I, I don't know. My reputation is about to be staked on the line here. Yeah, that's very true. At the end of this, we're going to sort of compare and contrast our teams and, and decide who came out of this on top, on top. But a couple rules here before we get going. So we can only draft players who are eligible and not or eligible and active for the spring game on Saturday. So some notable players who will be out, quarterback Riley Leonard, uh, Benjamin Morrison, Mitchell Evans, uh, wide receiver Jane Thomas is dealing with a hamstring injury. Jane Harrison is dealing with an injury as well. Plus, Kevin Bauman is still in recovery. Gabriel Rubio is ineligible, as is Tyson Ford and wide receiver Jordan Faison. So, and most importantly, punter Bryce McPherson. Bryce McPherson. That's true. <laughs> there will be no specialists in this one. We are only picking the starters, 11 starters on offense and 11 starters on defense. Um, a couple rules we each have to draft. One quarterback, one running back, at least two wide receivers, a tight end, and then a flex position, sort of like in fantasy football. It can be either another running back, wide receiver, or a tight end, and then five starters in the offensive line. And then on defense, you've got um, your Viper, two defensive tackles, a defensive end or a linebacker, plus two more linebackers. And then you could have a linebacker slash nickel, two cornerbacks, and two safeties. So, for the audio listeners and the video listeners, since you won't be able to see who we have throughout, we'll make sure to repeat it so that everyone is up to date on who we have uh, throughout this draft. And we're going to go pretty quick on these. We're not going to commentate on every single pick, but we'll sort of keep each other honest. But Luke, lead us off here with the number one overall pick. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, with no further ado, I think I'm going to start with Jeremiah Love, actually. Wow. All right. Take the running back off the board early. I'm going to build on the defense to start. I'm going to go Howard Cross. All right. Fair enough. Um, you know what? I think I am going to go with uh, his, what What would you call it, running mate or? Counterpart? Counterpart, uh, Riley Mills at the other defensive tackle. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stay on the defense. I'm going to take Xavier Watts. I feel like he's just too good of a player, and he's probably going to get a pick six in this game because both quarterbacks uh, had a couple interceptions last week during the jersey scrimmage, so I feel like Xavier Watts is going to be able to take advantage. Okay. Um, with the next pick, going back to the offensive side of the ball, I'm going with who I think, I don't know if they actually named this last year, but if they didn't, who should have been the blue gold game MVP in Jaden Greathouse. I don't know how many catches he had in that game. It was something like 10. It was, it was a ridiculous yeah. amount. And it sounds like from all accounts, he has been wide receiver number one this spring. So I think that continues on Saturday. 
Yeah, he did have a great game, and that was sort of the moment when you're like, oh, wow, Jane Greathouse is actually going to be a player this year. Jane Thomas had that exceptional first couple drives with Sam Harbin, and then he sat out the rest of the game. But in in this world, our players are going to be playing <laughs> throughout the whole game. Okay, so a couple guys who are out. I should probably pick an offensive player here. Um, all right, you know what? I'm going to add Jadarian Price to my team. Pretty interesting that we're already this, w- uh, this far through and <laughs> still no quarterback off the board yet. Yeah, and I'm not going to change that uh, right now. Um, I think I'm going to go with Jalen Sneed next. It sounds like he's had a tremendous spring. I'd like to see him on my team and see what he can do on Saturday. Okay, so right now I've got Jadarian Price in offense. I've got Howard Cross and Xavier Watts on defense. I think I'm just going to – I got to get a lineman. You know what? This might be a crazy pick. I don't really think it is. I'm going to take Billy Shrouth. I feel like like even though he – He's not the one returning starter that goes to Pat Coogan. He did get some starts at the end of last year, and the way that people are talking about him in this spring practice, I think he has the chance or has a really good chance to be the best offensive lineman on the team this year. I like that, Um, and that raises a good point. I'm actually going to take who it sounds like has probably been the second best lineman on this team so far, and that's the center, Ashton Craig. And part of the reason I'm doing that also is because of what we've heard with uh, Sam Pendleton's struggles to snap the football so far, uh, which I think is is common for a guy transitioning to center, particularly in the spring. But, hey, if your other center can't snap the ball, that could cause some problems. Yeah, it's like McLaughlin from Alabama yeah. who just basically torpedoed their chances yeah. at winning that playoff game against Michigan because uh, he could not get the snap down. I mean, he had like five botched snaps in a playoff game. That has to be a record. I, I don't remember another one. So like like one happening period is my point. So yes, I, I would think it was a record. Okay, so I've got Jadarian Price, Billy Shrouth, Howard Cross, Xavier Watts. I'm going to take uh, another veteran on defense. Give me Jack Kaiser as my first linebacker off the board. Okay, I like that. Um, speaking of veterans, Jordan Matelho, why not? Um, I don't know how much he's actually going to do in a spring game, but... If he shows up in this spring game, maybe that's evidence that he's truly as locked in and as healthy as he's ever been. I don't know. If you could just convince Jordan Batello that this spring game a bowl is game? actually a bowl game, you're going to get yeah. like three sacks out of him. All yeah. right, so we're starting to beef up the defense. My offense, still no quarterbacks off the board, but I need a playmaker on the outside. I This might be a bit of a bull pick. Without Faison, without Thomas, and without Harrison – eligible wide receiver. I'm going to take the transfer from Florida International. I'm going to take Chris Mitchell. I want a deep threat. We've heard some really good things about him so far in this camp, and I think he has a chance to be a starter day one, which is not something I would have expected going into the spring, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'll be curious to see if he can take off, take the top off the defense or not, but um, in order to do that, he's going to have to go up against the cornerback, and uh, with that, I'm going to take the first corner off the board in Christian Gray. Okay, that's a good pick. I thought I definitely wanted to take him with the next pick. I'm not ready to go with Jane Mickey just yet. I feel like I need an edge rusher. So I'm going to take um, RJ Oban, the transfer Mm. from Duke. Okay, yeah, hard to argue with that one. Tight end. Um, How about Cooper Flanagan here? I think um, I I don't know how much. Uh, Eli Raritan is actually going to play in this game. It sounded like in the Jersey scrimmage, he did more than perhaps the media had seen him do all spring, but no real reason to put him into a ton of action here. So why not Cooper Flanagan, who I think had a like kind of under the radar, very strong freshman year. Um, and I'll be interested to see what he does this year. Okay. So this pick is mostly based on Eli Raritan recovering, or at least maybe not recovering, but just being uh, load on, management. On a pitch limit. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah, um, you're right, though, about Cooper Flanagan, like Notre Dame just had so much depth and Mitchell Evans when he sort of took off, like after he got hurt, Cooper Flanagan got on the field a little bit more and was really effective when he was out there. So that's a good pick. Um, all right. So right now I've got Jadarian Price, Chris Mitchell and Billy Shrouth on offense, on defense. I've got RJ Oban, Howard Cross, Jack Kaiser and Xavier Watts. I feel really good about my defense so far in this draft, not is great about my offense. And I feel like, you know what? I might need to beef up the offensive line a little bit. Uh, Give me Pat Coogan at left guard. So I've got Billy Shrouth, Coogan at guard. So I feel pretty good about the interior on my offensive line. 
That's a good call. Um, seeing as I have not taken any offensive lineman besides Ashton Craig, might be time to beef that up as well. <laughs> um, so I am going to go with Charles Jagasaw here at left tackle. Okay. That's a, that's a good pick. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about him. Just I feel like he's going to yeah. – there, there's going to be some games where he misses a couple blocks, and you're like, oh, that's tough. But he's, it's going to have to happen. Like those lumps are going to have to happen eventually. No offensive lineman just steps in and dominates from day one. All right. Um, I think it's time. It's time to take a quarterback. I'm going to take Steve Angeli. Um, I know he didn't look that great in the jersey scrimmage, but he's still more experienced and more trustworthy than any of the other quarterbacks on Notre Dame's roster right now while Riley Leonard sits out. So I need a guy leading the way on offense. I'm going to take Angeli. You're not wrong, and I, I think that's that's a fair pick. Um, I'm going to go to the defensive side of the ball here, which, as we look at it, has Patello at edge rusher, uh, Riley Mills at the middle, Jalen Sneed at linebacker, and Christian Gray at the one corner spot. I'm going to take a safety, and I'm going to go with the Don Schuler. Sounds like he's had a pretty good spring. Um, Hard-hitting safety. We'll have him out there free safety. Okay. That's a good pick. I just realized I have not picked a cornerback yet. That is a glaring miss <laughs> so far. Uh, I'm going to take Jaden Mickey. You took Christian Gray. He would have been my number one quarterback off the board, but – Mickey has had a really good spring. He had a pick six in that jersey scrimmage, and he's got a lot to prove, especially while Benjamin Morrison sits out. So I'm going to take my first corner in Jaden Mickey. Okay, I like that. All right, now, wide receivers. Um, let's be honest. It's a little bit of slim pickings right now, but I'm going to go with Cam Williams, I guess, just because he's one of the few guys that – isn't hurt or isn't in school yet or isn't uh, playing lacrosse. <laughs> so Cam Williams, it is joining Jaden Greathouse at the other wide receiver spot. Okay. I'm glad you picked Williams because that means I get to take Micah Gilbert for another fresh in wide receiver. So I'm going to take him right now. An offensive got um, Angeli at quarterback price at running back at receiver. I've got Micah Gilbert and Chris Mitchell. Uh, and then on the line, I got Pat Coogan and Billy Shrouth. Well, you know what? I'm, this depth chart I'm looking at right now doesn't even have Micah Gilbert listed. It's got everybody else, but not him. So that might be a miss by these guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, You're going to have to fire your scout, dude. Yeah, this is tough. Uh, I don't know what I was looking at earlier. Right tackle, I think, uh, just to kind of put the other, other corner there on the offensive line, I'm going to go with – this is going to sound crazy. I'm going to go with Emil Wagner over Tosh Baker. Uh, I I think I, it's not that I dislike Tosh Baker. I just like to see what a younger offensive line can do. So give me Emil Wagner at right tackle. Okay. That's a good pick. It's interesting because, like Marcus Truman said specifically, that that is a ongoing competition between Baker and Wagner, but it does seem like Baker is taking up a lot yeah. of the first team reps. Maybe Emil Wagner steps into this blue and gold game on Saturday in the real blue and gold game and maybe makes that competition a little bit closer. We'll be right back with Luke to continue with our draft. But first, I want to tell you about Monopoly Go. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime, and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low. Not sure if you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends and get the most riches in the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. You can play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. You can make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with the wrecking ball. You can even charge other players rent for your iconic properties. And you can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb that leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or Google Play. I'm actually surprised it's taken us this long to get to this next player. I'm taking Jay Osbury. He's been one of the most impressive players uh, throughout spring practice. Marcus Freeman said he's going to find a way onto the field because he's just that talented and also that versatile. So now at linebacker, I've got Jack Kaiser, Jay Osbury on the line. I've got RJ Open, Howard Cross, and then my secondary, I've got Jane Mickey and Xavier Watts. I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little good about my defense, dude. I think as you should. Um, nothing to to complain about there. And defensively, right now, uh, partnering with Jalen Sneed at linebacker, we're gonna have a 
potentially very good, potentially very dangerous linebacking tandem. And I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I'm going to go with KVA at the other linebacker spot. Um, do we know if Drake Bowen is playing in this game? Because I don't know if there's a baseball game, what the deal is with that. It does seem like Drake Bowen has been much more of an active participant in Notre Dame spring practice than a Jordan Faison. And I think that mm-hmm. just has to do with the fact that Jordan Faison is a critical piece on the lacrosse team. I think Drake Bowen still has a lot to go or has a long way to go before he earns significant playing time. I think he's gotten some some action in between, but I, I do think he's going to be a full participant in the game on Saturday, at least as of now as we tape here on, uh, what day is it, Tuesday night? Yeah, okay, fair enough. Okay, so you're taking KVA over Drake Bowen. Was that based solely on the fact that you weren't sure about Drake Bowen, or you're just that high on KVA? I just want to see KVA out there. I, it's not that I dislike Drake Bowen at all. I, I wasn't positive that he was playing, but I, I think he's going to be good too. But I think it was Jamie Uyama of Irish Sports Daily today tweeted saying that he, the things he's heard about KVA this offseason are the highest praise he's heard of a freshman in his decade covering the team. That seems pretty good. So um, Objectively, we'll good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. I need a tight end, and I'm going to take Eli Raritan. Yes, there are some concerns about his pitch count, so to speak. Um, but I just, I just think that they think so highly of him that they're just sort of like waiting and sort of holding him back as long as they can to ensure that he is fully healthy going into this season, because I really think that he has a chance to have a breakout year. And in this hypothetical blue and gold game, there's no pitch count. He's out there every play. Cause we also don't have any backups. It's 11 on 11 for the full game. And I'm trusting in Eli Raritan's knees. He's going to be my tight end. Okay. There you go. I like that. Um, I'm going to go to the nickel here. Uh, as a guy that was a, a Clarence Lewis supporter to the point that I thought he was going to, st- I didn't actually think this. I said it probably 45 times that, uh, Clarence Lewis was going to start at the nickel. It sounds like Jordan Clark played him out of a job and played him all the way to Syracuse, New York. So I'm going to go with Jordan Clark here at the nickel. Yeah. Can I get 30 seconds, uh, mm. on Clarence Lewis to Syracuse? What are your thoughts? <laughs> your boy's gone. What did I say uh, the last time I was on? Didn't I say something like Rutgers? I, yeah, you so said th- Rutgers. Th- you were you were close. To, uh, you knew it was going to be in the Northeast, and that was pretty. Close. I think this is an upgrade on Rutgers um, because this this new coach, this Georgia recruiter. We'll see how it goes. I <laughs> something I thought about when I actually saw that news when I was coming home from work earlier is. If you told Kyle McCord and Clarence Lewis on the last drive of that Notre Dame Ohio State game last September that the two of them would be teammates in Syracuse, New York, <laughs> six months from then, they would have been like, "What happened?" Yeah, I I still cannot fully comprehend the fact that uh, Kyle McCord is going to be the Syracuse quarterback next year, and now Ohio State is like four dudes in that room. Um, who I guess kind of all stick. The starting quarterback. Yeah. Well, yeah, who knows? Because they got two five star quarterbacks in the same class. I'm sure that won't lead to any animosity. But I'm looking at this team right now. My defense have got RJ Oban, Howard Cross, uh, Jack Heiser, Jane Osprey, Jane Mickey, and Xavier Watts. I need to beef up that line. I'm going to add Josh Burnham as my other defensive end. I know that I'm kind of cheating here a little bit because RJ Oban. And Josh Burnham, like Burnham might get some reps at Viper, but in this case, um, we're gonna we're gonna move him around. We're gonna split him up on that offensive line. So give me okay. Josh Burnham there. I like it. Um, so on the offensive side of the ball, Still got no some quarterback. <laughs> I, I know. I'm, I'm I'm saving that one. Uh not that not that I need to make a pick now, yeah, anyways. That's true. But uh got some weapons between Jeremiah Love, Cam Williams, Jaden Greathouse, and, and Cooper Flanagan at tight end. In the flex spot, I, I'm really struggling between, yeah, okay, you know what? It's going to be Keidre and Young after all, I guess. Interesting. So you're just going to be running 22 personnel the whole game with Jeremiah Love and Keidre and Young. That is kind of like a thunder and lightning backfield, though. Well, and here's the other thing is that Jeremiah Love can be split out wide if we need him to. So That's true. That's so true. really, I guess I'll switch their spots. Yeah, why not? I like that pick. I'm also realizing right now I have a lot of skilled players in offense. Steve Angeli, Jadarian Price, Mikey Gilbert, Chris Mitchell, and Eli Raritan. I only have two offensive linemen, and they're both on the interior, and Pat Coogan and Billy Shrouth. It is time to add a tackle, and I'm going to add Tosh Baker at right tackle. I need someone defending the edge over there. Okay. There you go. So, defensive tackle. This is a little bit tricky, 
but I think I'm going to go with Jason Anye at the other defensive tackle spot here, and that's alongside Riley Mills. Okay, I like that. Um, all right, we're 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 kind of filling out our rosters here. We're getting a little bit further down the depth chart. On offense, I've got Angeli Price, Gilbert Mitchell, Raritan. On the line, i got Coogan, Shrouth, Baker. Defense, I feel good about it. Uh, Oben, Cross, Burnham, Kaiser, Osbury. Jane Mickey and Xavier Watts, but with you taking Anya, I want to round out my defensive line as well. Um, I'm going to take Donovan Heinish. I think he's been playing really well. He honestly played a lot more last year than I expected he would. He had that sack in the NC State game, and now I've just wrapped up my defensive line with RJ Oben, Howard Cross, Donovan Heinish, and Josh Burnham. I'm 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 asking a lot of my guys in, in Oben and Cross to to kind of make up for some of the inexperience on that line, but I just feel like Howard Cross is a chance to be a top three player on the team, and that's why he was my first pick. Hard to argue with that. Um, I'm gonna fill out my defensive line here as well. And currently it's Patello, Mills, and Anye. It's kind of remarkable this guy's still around, but uh, I'm going with Pupacar Traore at uh, the defensive end spot here. Um, much like you did with Burnham at Viper, moving him to DN, so kind of cheating a little bit, but not really. A um, little bit surprised it took either of us this long to get to him, but I'm going to take him. Yeah, now that you say that, that feels like a giant miss. Someone's yeah. getting fired in my personnel department. <laughs> All right, I need another I need a flex player on offense right now. Here are the here are the skill players who are taken. So, I've got Gilbert Mitchell and Raritan, Luke Scott, Jeremiah Love, Cam Williams, Jane Greathouse, Cooper Flanagan, and Keedron Young. I'm kind of compelled to take another running back, but I'm going to go with a little off the wall pick here. So I've got Gilbert and Chris Mitchell. They could play on the outside. I'm taking a dark horse. Give me K.K. Smith. He's sort of been forgotten okay. about because he was a freshman last year, one of the few freshmen who didn't play at all. The only other one was Braylon James, and now he's at TCU. But he's been turning heads in this camp. I am a little worried he might leave after this game because the, the room is so deep. And Mike Brown, the wide receivers coach, stated publicly that – he really only needs six or seven guys in the rotation, and they're going to get pretty much all the snaps, which might leave some guys in a you know, difficult situation. But I, I would love to have K.K. Smith in the slot there, so he's going to be my flex. Okay, I like that. You're right. He has been forgotten, and perhaps um, he'll have a uh, – I forget what Greg Olson's brother's name was, but a, a, that type of performance where he really shines out in the blue-gold game and then transfers out not long after. But – We'll see. Hopefully not for K.K. Smith for Notre Dame's sake. I am going to take my right guard now. And currently my offensive line has Jagasaw at left tackle, Ashton Craig at center, and Emil Wagner at right tackle. We're going to go with Rocco Spindler, who is not 100% yet, but I do expect will play in this game, correct? I think he's going to play, yeah. Yeah. All right, Rocco Spindler, the right guard. All right, I also need to... I need to wrap up my offensive line here. I realized I don't have a left tackle, and that might be the second most important position on the field. And right now, Charles Jagasaw has such a big lead over anyone else. It does seem like the backup would be Sullivan Absher. So this is a risky pick, but we're getting late in the draft here. So I'm going to take him because I need someone over there. And even though you have rounded out both of your tackle spots, I feel like it's time for me to add one. And uh, we'll see. This is a big spot for Sullivan Absher. It is indeed. Um, and we'll see if he lives up to it in this mythical game that actually is taking place on sa Saturday. But yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, safety. Alongside of Don Schuler, we're going to go with Luke Talish here, um, which I don't know. That it's a little bit thin pickings with uh, Rod Hurd not yet on campus and Clarence Lewis in the portal, but that's where we're going to go. Um, as a brief aside, I feel like there has really not been a lot of Ben Minnick talk at all. Um, I feel like there was more when he first came in, and now I don't really hear a whole lot about him. So is he hurt? I don't know. but That's a good point, though. I've actually thought about that, too, because he was one of those guys who you heard like in summer workouts right after he arrived on campus. He's really turning some heads. And then I think that he did get hurt at one point. Yeah, he, he was hurt last year, uh, I think, in spring practice. <clears throat> but I think the – the novelty of like Luke Talich, a player with his size and his frame, and also the fact that 
he turned down multiple scholarship offers from some good programs, including Utah, yeah. to come to Notre Dame. He bet on himself. He immediately earned a scholarship. So the bet worked out, and I think people are just really excited about his potential, and he has consumed a lot of those backup reps. And then also you add in the fact that Rod Hurd is coming down, uh, and he'll join the team in the summer. So it just doesn't really look like there's a great opportunity for Ben Minnick to play. So – Right now, I, I've only got one more spot on offense left. That's center, but I have got a few more open spots on my defense, particularly in the secondary. I still only have one cornerback in Jane Mickey and one safety in Xavier Watts, and I feel like I've sort of been leaning on Xavier Watts a lot to sort of carry the load for this secondary. And with you know Benjamin Morrison out, Chance Tucker has been getting some reps at safety. Micah Bell has been getting some reps at safety. I really wish Clarence Lewis were still around. So, you know what? I'm going to take a chance here. I'm going to take Micah Bell. Um, I know he's been getting some reps at nickel. I'm going to just put him at corner. He's super fast. He's pretty young. He's inexperienced. But hopefully that lands because we're, we're getting at the bottom of that cornerback depth chart. We are, and um, that's actually how I'm going to fill out my defense with a corner uh, right now, and I'm going to take Chance Tucker. So my defense has Batello, Mills, Anye, Traore, KVA, Sneed, Clark, Gray, Tucker, Schuler, and Talich. That is a loaded squad if I've ever heard one. Luke and I still have some more draft content to get to, but first a word from Yahoo Finance. When it comes to your financial future, you think you've done it all. You've saved, you've researched, you've invested all that you can. Now you need to take those investments to the next level by using what every financial great uses, Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or if you're looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They are the number one finance destination producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors, and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. With a community of over 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, Visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination. That's yahoofinance.com, yahoofinance.com. I just realized, I can't believe he's, we've talked about him, but he's still on the board. Give me Drake Bowen. Oh, So yeah. now my linebackers here, I've got Drake Bowen at the mic. I've got J- I've got Jack Kaiser at the will, and I've got Jay Nosbury at the Roval uh, at the Rover, excuse me, and then at Nickel. Uh, I don't have a nickel on the field, so I'm running a four-three base here. You might be able to attack me through the air, but you still don't have a quarterback. Which I guess you know it's a little bit different. If we were trying to build out a two deep, you would have had to get one a little bit earlier. But I, I picked Steve Angeli off the board early, and you know I wasn't going to be fighting over Kenny Minchie considering I already had my QB. No, I don't or think CJ so. Carr. I shouldn't have. I should not have appointed Kenny Minchie to be a quarterback <laughs> that early. Correct. Uh, we'll get to that later. Um, so uh, the last position I have to fill on the offensive line is left guard, and I guess I'm going to go with Chris Tarek here just so you have it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a nice guy and give you the other center. Otherwise, I don't know who else would play center. Uh, actually, shoot. What about You've got um, Odding too? You've got yeah, a couple I was just options thinking him. here. You've got Odding. I'm going to go with Joe Odding. Okay? okay. I feel like we've heard some decent things about him. And um, why not? We'll give him a shot in this game. Okay. But you're right. I do not have a center. I'm going to take Sam Pendleton. I, I Yes, there are some concerns about the snaps, but uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll we'll figure it out. Again, It's we're, we're getting to the very end here. We have drafted 21. Of our 22 available spots, which means we are both on our last pick of this draft. Who are you taking? I think I have an idea. (laughs) Yeah, I think my quarterback's going to be CJ Carr, actually. Uh, And it's not necessarily because I don't like Kenny Minchie. I I do like him. Um, I just really want to see CJ Carr in this game. Throwing at Jaden Greathouse, throwing at Cam Williams. Hell, even throwing at Jeremiah Love in the slot. Um, Just everything we've heard about him. Has made it sound like he has been the fresh, the best freshman quarterback to come through Notre Dame in a really long time. I don't know what the barometer is, but in a really, really long time. And, it's a low bar. <laughs> um, 
you have to wonder what sort of impact. Yeah, that's a good point. You have to wonder what sort of impact that has on Kenny Minchie and how he views his future at Notre Dame. Not speculating at all, but um, you just have to wonder about that. So CJ Card is for me. Yeah, uh, I, I I really have no idea what's going to happen with this quarterback room. Like I felt going into spring practice, oh well, it's just going to come down to Angeli or Minchie making a decision, and I still feel like that's the case. But I feel like maybe I. I I don't know. I don't even want to speculate because there's so much that could still change here. All right, with my last pick of the draft, the last position still on my board is the safety opposite Xavier Watts, and I'm going to take Ben Minnick. So with that, we have drafted our teams. Uh, I'll go over my offense real quick, and then Luke, you go over yours. So I've got Steve Angeli at quarterback, Jadarian Price at running back. My receivers are Mikey Gilbert, Chris Mitchell, and K.K. Smith. Tight end is Eli Raritan, and then on the offensive line going left to right, Sullivan Absher, Pat Coogan, Sam Pendleton, Billy Shrouth, and Tosh Baker. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, meanwhile, offensively, I've got CJ Carr, man in the quarterback position. Jeremiah Love at running back. Cam Williams, wide receiver. Jaden Greathouse at the other receiver. Cooper Flanagan, tight end. And the flex, we got Keedron Young. So, chance to put him in the backfield, split Jeremiah Love out wide. And then the offensive line from left to right is Jagasaw, Odding, Ashton Craig, Rocco Spindler, and Emil Wagner. Um, there's a lot of talent across this offense as you look at both these units. As we look at, the, as, at your offense specifically, you have a much better offensive line. <laughs> like, that's a big mismatch because you've got... Two and a half starters? Yeah, two and a half starters, essentially, in Jagasaw, Craig, and then Spindler, who started a lot last year, and then Joe Otting, who might be one of the best reserves, and then Emil Wagner, who was right there behind the starter. Meanwhile, my offensive line, like I've got Shrouth and I've got Coogan, which I feel good about, but then I've got Sullivan Absher at left tackle. I've got I've got Tosh Baker at right tackle, too. So that's three likely starters, but a little bit of uncertainty with Tosh Baker, and then yeah, a lot of uncertainty at the left tackle position. We picked it pretty late. And honestly, as I was typing in Sullivan Absher into this Google Doc, it made me realize Notre Dame probably needs a transfer at tackle in a, in a bad way, even more yeah. so than I thought before doing this exercise. It, you're right. When you kind of dig into it, it's um, there, there aren't a ton of options at the bottom, and there are a couple injuries away from maybe being in trouble. So, yes, I think you're right. And that's sort of the whole intent in us doing this exercise is to really like you're looking at the the top end talent. And of course, it's a little bit different right now, given the fact that Notre Dame is not fully healthy, but odds are they're not going to be fully healthy throughout the season. So you kind of get to see, okay, these are the first players taken off the board. These are the no brainers. But when you start going through it and you go by position by position, you start to realize, hey, there's not a ton of depth on the offensive line, specifically on the outside. But then at the skill positions, like, like I got... K.K. Smith very late in the game, and I think he could definitely be a contributor this year. I don't know if he will be, but I think he has the ability to be, and that is not something we've been able to say about the wide receivers in years past. It's not. It's uh, it's pretty remarkable how quickly that position has seemingly flipped over. However, I know. that said, I am not ready to fully commit to that until I actually see it with my own eyes. But yes, in theory, yes. Totally fair. All right, now let's take a look at these defenses. So on my defensive line, I've got R.J. Oben, Howard Cross, Donovan Heinish, and Josh Burnham. I've got two veterans and then two relatively inexperienced guys. Feel great about my linebackers. Love this group. Jack Kaiser, Drake Bowen, and then Jay Nosberry. You've got Jack Kaiser, the veteran, extremely efficient when he's out on the field, always making plays. I do not feel as good about my secondary. I've got Xavier Watts, which is great. He's going to have to cover a lot of ground in this game because my other corners are Jade Mickey and Micah Bell, and then my safety opposite Watts is Ben Minnick. So hopefully my front seven is able to wreak some havoc in your backfield every single play because it's it's not it's not looking as great at corner and uh, at my safety as well. Yeah, I mean – it's we'll, we'll we'll have to see how our tackles hold up, right? And if yeah. they just get blitzed, then it could be a long day for CJ Carr. But if not, it could be a long day for your secondary. You're right. All right, take us through your defense. So I like the defensive line as well. I've got Jordan Batella and Riley Mills, as well as Jason Anya and Puba Car Traore, who I think is one of the most exciting players on the roster based on what we hear about him and what we saw that one time yeah. against USC. I hope so he does I, that again. Yeah. We're, <laughs> Without like just like losing his mind and uh, <laughs> and getting a penalty, but yes, um, or forcing a timeout, whatever it was. Anyways, and then at linebacker, 
we've got KVA and Snead, which is potentially really dangerous, and that's up to your interpretation whether that's a good or a bad dangerous. We've got Jordan <laughs> Clark playing the nickel. Heard a lot of good things about him this spring after I think expectations weren't as high on him coming in, so we'll see how that shakes out. And then I would say that the uh, the secondary is a bit of a mixed bag um, with Christian Gray and Adon Schuler. I like those guys out there. Chance Tucker at the other corner, I'm very uncertain about. And Luke Talich, I, I have some questions about. So we'll see how it, maybe Steve Angeli has a day against this defense as well. But um, yeah, I think this would be a pretty even matchup, to be honest. You've got a really good defensive line. Mm-hmm. Vitello, Mills, Anye, Traore. Traore was probably the biggest miss in this whole exercise. I feel like he fell down the board a little bit just because. Bowen's um, up there too. Yeah. Bowen's up there. I got great value in Bowen. So when we look at the matchup offense to defense, uh, I am worried about my offensive line going up against your defensive line. But I feel good about my passing attack with Angeli. I've got Gilbert, Mitchell, and K.K. Smith going up against Christian Gray, who I love, but also Chance Tucker, Adon Schuler, and Luke Talish. You are not getting a ton of help on the back end, so I think it'd be a really close game. But after we did this exercise, did you learn anything? Do you have any new takeaways about the roster that you otherwise did not have going into this? I think you hit on it with the offensive line. Um, There are potentially some gaps there that need to be plugged. And I don't know if this is something I necessarily learned, but um, I think – the health of the tight end room has been made a big deal. And I think that we're, we kind of forget almost a little bit about Cooper Flanagan because he played a ton last year and they had a lot of guys. So I just kind of want to call out that I think he's ready to step to the challenge. Obviously I'd love to have Mitchell Evans back and love to have Eli Raritan um, back in full form. But like if this tight end group does get healthy, I mean, they have a chance to be maybe the best position group on the roster. Yeah, they've got a real possibility uh, to be that talented because I think Cooper Flanagan is going to be a really, really good tight end. And there's been a lot of talk about Mitchell Evans and his recovery. And um, I I always felt like when he got hurt, you know, ACL injuries can vary player to player. But it happened at a time when you're like, okay, if things work out, he should be at least – ready to suit up and get some action at the start of the season. But yeah, I I definitely feel better. So long as Raritan and um, Flanagan stay healthy, like I know that there's been some talk about Kevin Bauman. I just, I don't want to be dismissive of him as a player because I think that when Notre Dame signed him and he got on campus, he was a really talented prospect with a ton of potential, but just like, I I kind of got it. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not, I'm not really going to believe it until I see it when it comes to him and, and actually seeing him on the field making some plays, which is unfortunate because um, I thought he had a really bright career. But I am a little bit concerned about that. But, yeah, I feel like when we did this, I feel even better about the wide receivers. And then you consider the fact that Jane Thomas and Jane Harrison weren't even really available for this exercise. Um, The defensive line with Gabriel Rubio, that's going to be a big piece. Obviously, quarterback Riley Leonard. Um, I have actually forgot to mention Jordan Faison as well. So, the, the wide receiver room, where it is now, and obviously it's probably subject to change because they're most likely going to lose a guy or two in the portal because that position just sort of breeds itself to the transfer portal. But uh, I feel good about this group. It's funny because tomorrow on Thursday, Marcus Freeman and the Notre Dame coaching staff are going to do their own draft and they're going to fill out the entire roster. So it's going to take a little bit longer than what we did here today. But do you think it'll be anywhere close to what we did? I'm I'm gonna have a hunch and say no, uh, but yeah, <laughs> they should hire I know. us. They should yeah, hire us. we can be consultants for that. Absolutely. All right, that does it for this draft. Uh, I really enjoyed that. I feel like we learned a lot while doing it. Do you have any final thoughts before we let you go? Yeah, I think the other thing I was gonna say actually, just really quickly. I know Ben Morrison's out. That cornerback depth after the first three is very unproven. Like there aren't a ton of guys in that room. Um, so that just one last thing, uh, one last parting shot, but. No, that's it. That was a good exercise. All right. That was a lot of fun. Luke, we'll talk to you after the spring game. All right. All right. That's a wrap for this episode. Thanks again for making Lockdown Irish your first citizen of the day. Going to be back with you every morning throughout the rest of the week. By the way, we're doing a mailbag on Friday, so get your questions in. You can send them in on X at Lockdown Irish or on Instagram at Lockdown Irish Pod. Also, be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube or wherever you're listening to the podcast, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.